I've had a lot of ups and a lot of downs with this car, and often than not, it never ran right, but it always ran right. See, things are always flawed. If there weren't any flaws, there would be no perfections. So in a lot of respects speaking, if it's not perfect, and everything is not perfect, does that make it perfect? These are the kind of questions you need to ask yourself when you're stoned off your ass at a bonfire at 3 a.m. while everyone else is passed out drunk. I was involved in an accident. Um, I'm alright before anyone asks, and no one else was involved, but to sum up the incident, I was going a little too fast on a dirt road, and the weather environments were not in my favor. I hydroplaned, and, well, the story is simple. I was on the road, and then I wasn't on the road, and then I ate a fat bull of shit. And that shit was basically a tree, and I was literally in a rock in a hard place. Anyhow, debating to what you're not, whether you're questioning what this video is, it is a tribute video to the 2013 Jetta that I used to own, dubbed the Regretted Jetta. I never really liked this car the way I should have. I did fall in love with it, but it took a lot of bullshittery to get the thing to run right. This is, this is a Jetta S. The Jetta S was a base trim that was upgraded a little bit because it was not a good value to begin with, let's be honest. The value for the 2013 Jetta was actually really bad compared to other vehicles existing at the time. A couple of other car manufacturers, such as Toyota, had much better values for the money. And so, Volkswagen needed to create a car that had the certain options on it that the base trim didn't. And that was actually kind of funny, because Volkswagen is one of the last car manufacturers to truthfully author a manual stick shift as a standard option on trims. So the original Jetta had a 2.0 double overhead cam, a very good 2.0. The wiring had good quality control. Certain things and aspects of the vehicle were built right. But the base trim tag price was like $20,000 or like $26,000. That's a lot of money for something that doesn't even have air conditioning. I mean, it had a stick shift, air con it had no air conditioning, and for some reason it had power windows and power locks, but it didn't have power mirrors. It had power mirrors, but it didn't have heated mirrors. It was just a stupid stupid, stupid thing that they did. It made no sense. You have all these premium power everything uh, in terms of windows and locks, and, and yet you don't have a car alarm, and you don't have a fucking air conditioner, and that you couldn't get an automatic. If you wanted an automatic, you had to get the SE. So Volkswagen said, okay, we're losing a lot of money in the sell sales of this car because people do not want to buy, because a lot of people who are buying these things are like, they're an old lady driving, or some young, dumb college bitch who probably has the front end scratched and beat up because she crashed it into someone else's back of their car because she was texting and driving, which she shouldn't be. Now, these are stereotypes, and that's what we love about automotive stuff is that stereotypes, being an automotive guy, are almost always true. And that's the fucked part about it. Regardless, this car was cheaped out. Volkswagen cut corners on a lot of things in order to be able to install the automatic, traditional torque converter based stick speed auto gearbox, but you know what, honestly, they're not bad. They, they tend to blow themselves apart at about roughly 150,000 miles, so. But, uh, getting into it, um, they also had to get AC. Now, keep in mind, Volkswagen doesn't use clutch-based AC compressors. They use something called a uh, clutchless variable displacement compressor. And basically, uh, or basically for short, a CVD compressor. Um, how it works is simple. I'll edit in a video here that demonstrates the high and the low strokes. And the idea of it is it gives you maximum efficiency while still not interfering too much with horsepower. And that is true because this engine... And I'm going to get into the engine, but it only made 110 horsepower to the wheels, which is, for a 3,500-pound car, is not enough on the borderline of being too little. It's not to say that it's not a bad engine. It's just the way that they designed components around the engine could have been done a lot better. That compressor cost a lot of money. 
And so Volkswagen had to make cuts, if you know what I mean. The 2.0 that's in my car was one of the big things that they had to do to cut cost in order to fit that automatic transmission and that compressor in there and a couple other fancy gadgets they added, like heated mirrors and like better bolstering in the seats. It's a 2.0 with a single overhead cam, the kind that they stopped using in the 90s. And that's not to say that it's a bad engine. As a matter of fact, it's pretty much near bulletproof. But Volkswagen, being the insensitive retards that they are, decided, well, what? Well, let's just go ahead and make an intake muffler with the cheapest plastic going. What the fuck is this shit? Are you looking at this? This is an intake muffler. The 2.0s are known for being actually relatively quiet engines for the most part if you don't have an exhaust on them. And the irony is, most of the noise on the 2.0 is from the intake manifold. Which, by the way, mine was made out of plastic. See, Volkswagen had a metal one prior to this engine, its reconstruction in the newer model year. The single overhead cam had a metal intake manifold in the very early 2000s before they stopped using them. They had a very hard time getting these engines to run right because, first off, they're extremely relatively low compression compared to the the double overhead cam 2.0s. These, these do not like to breathe on their own at all. They can't, matter of fact. They really do need an assist with the turbo. That is just how they were designed to begin with. They need a turbo. And here's Volkswagen coming along. What are we going to do? Let's make it naturally aspirated. Make it so it fucks itself sideways with terrible fuel mixtures because we put really, really cheap injectors. I mean, these things are garbage. I ended up replacing my fuel injectors with Bosch high-performance fuel injectors, and, and, and that helped out a lot. That fixed a lot of my lean mix fi misfire issues because my injectors were getting stuck shut and sometimes stuck open, and it was causing me some havoc. Another thing these engines really suffer from is misfires. That's a common issue with these things. Oh my god, Volkswagen and misfires go together better than toast and butter, I should say. I mean, the engine computers would often than not re not recognize misfires, and then sometimes it would recognize misfires when they weren't there. I don't know what the fuck the crankshaft sensor's on, but I want some of that shit, because it's on some heavy-ass drugs. Um, I don't know if it was just something due to a false wiring and the vibrations causing the crankshaft sensor to kind of go out of phase sometimes, but often than not, you would find yourself with a little EPC engine light on, and oh my god, it was terrible. But the misfires are a serious issue with these engines. They just do not like to run in the cold and wet weather. I mean, my car got such bad fuel economy going to college and back, which is a 45-minute drive. The engine was too cold and there was not enough compression to heat up the air-to-fuel mixture before it combusted on the compression stroke that it just went through the exhaust. I ended up blowing up my muffler. There's like two mufflers on these things, which is unnecessary. You only need like one, and both of them are equally as adequate. Anyhow, besides the engine and the little quirks and the overall really terrible design flaws like Let's put a really high-quality Audi-based exhaust on it. This is straight from Volkswagen. The Jetta Passat Audi A3, A4, A5, A6, and A7 all use the exact same exhaust from the 2012 to the 2015 model year, and I think Audi changed it after that. But those particular exhausts are really nice and well-made, and I was very happy I had that until... They cut corners on mine. What they did was they used cheap exhaust mounts. So what happens when you're going down route or I-91, right, and you're doing 65? The whole fucking tailpipe starts bending in on itself, and you basically shut your exhaust, and you're sparking on the freeway. It's the simple, small things Volkswagen could have done to improve the actual quality of this particular trim is un- Presidented and quality control is a joke. Oh my god, the quality control is so bad. I had to rewire almost everything. And a matter of fact, I had to rewire, rewire my airbags. And if I didn't do that, I may not be talking here today with you guys. Because, well, I wouldn't be dead, but I definitely would have a serious neck injury. And I don't think I would have survived sitting there on my own, waiting for the cops to come in the middle of the woods. Anyhow... The electrical in Volkswagens is so bad. Besides the electrical, 
it's a good car. Uh, it does not accelerate for shit. Um, I did put a cold air intake, and I modified the exhaust, and it made roughly about 150 horsepower with a mild tune on it. That was better for fuel economy, I should mention. It wasn't really designed for speed. It was just a tune that my friend did for me to increase fuel economy, and it helped. Car got maybe 15 miles to the gallon city, and I'd say roughly 25 downhill on highway. I mean, it was really bad for uh, 2.0. I mean, for Christ's sake, I'm renting right now, temporarily, a 2020 Toyota Camry, and that's got a 2.5 liter inline 5, or inline 4, excuse me. That makes approximately 40 miles to the gallon seem like nothing. And that's very impressive. That's like beyond Prius territory right there. Anyhow, that's another review for another time. As for right now, um, my opinions of that car are very mixed, but I'm going to keep them as non-biased by this point as possible. The handling characteristics of that car, oh my god, they were gorgeous. I don't think I could list another car that I've driven that actually handles in corners and actually performs in terms of suspension, stock suspension. And keep in mind, the rear end is a torsion bar suspension, the rear end. And I originally, the stock Jettas had drums in the back. This had really flimsy disc brakes in the back that I ended up upgrading to heavier duty disc brakes. But still, I, uh, you know, it's discs in front and back with this. And it stops really quickly. ABS is phenomenal. The only thing I don't like about this car is that there's... On sometimes, depending on the situation, the power steering seems kind of slushy. Um, not quite like GM slushy, but it's over-boosted a little bit, like a Lincoln Town Car kind of a thing. But there's still a lot of steering feel, even when it's over-boosted, so it's not a problem. And uh, absolutely no play in that steering. I mean, there was none whatsoever. That car has a lot of input when you're actually on the freeway and the engine's maybe at thousand to two thousand rpms you can feel everything I have no complaints in that not a single inch of play in that steering even if the car got old and you know I, I i i fucked up my front rim on that car because i ate so many potholes and the alignment did not go out of place the suspension is a phenomenal and there's no body roll at all very good car it would handle very well on an actual track if volkswagen really put the money and time into it and decided to make a rally version of it. And I know they have, but I mean like an actual practical rally version of it. That a person with self-dignity and respect who would actually enjoy driving a car would feel. It was a good driver's car. Honestly, if you're, if you, I can see why people like these things, why guys buy these things and they actually daily them on the daily. You can feel a lot that's going on in here. But you gotta remove that intake muffler. You gotta remove some of the restrictive stuff. And you just, you... It's got to have a manual. I mean, you could still feel stuff with the automatic, but it's just not the same. Because I drove my friend's 2012 TDI with a manual in it. And it was very much so torquey because it's a TDI. But it had a stick and it, very high quality stick shift transmissions that they come with. So if you can, if you know how to learn how to, if you know how to drive a stick, just buy one with a stick shift. Please, for the love of God, you'll be doing yourself such a favor. Because the torque converter on this automatic transmission, you know, honestly, the automatic in here is not too bad. Um, but I compare it to, like, the levels of technology of a GM T450 transmission. It, it's just that primitive. It's just a, a really slushy, bipolar-ass, disc-based torque converter that does nothing but um, have a mental breakdown when you're trying to go up a hill. And it kind of has the engine doing about 23 to 2400 RPMs while holding a bipolar fit. And, uh, yeah. Further engine characteristics of this car are phenomenal. All the powers on the low end of that engine. The, the 2.0 single overhead cam is a very, very, very torquey on the low end engine. All the power past 4,000 RPMs drops off. You'll have a little bit of horsepower past 4, but that drops off right about 5, and you're just making lots of noise and valve float at 6. But you lose your torque curve dramatically as you go into the 5 grand mark. Do not do not rev it. It doesn't like to rev. It will punish you with a misfire. And if you're lucky, you won't shoot a goddamn spark plug on the out the side of your engine like I did. Anyhow, 
that's it, basically. To sum it up, I had some ups and downs with this car. I don't think it was bad. I think my time with it was a little bit short-lived. But, I'm okay with that. This car wasn't bad once I got all the weird quirks and shit out of it. and I'm kind of sad that I have to see it go, but... I mean, everything has to come to an end eventually. And obviously, this was too short. And with the amount of money put into it, I'm kind of pissed off. Especially considering, a day before I did this, I had to fucking take the engine partially out... To a <laughs> what the fuck, Volkswagen? I mean, I mean, this is still better than what a Kia would be like, but this is a shitty move. And I put a Bugatti water pump in it, too. A really fancy Volkswagen Bugatti branded water pump. So I'm kind of upset, but... I mean, that kid only cost me 50 bucks, so... 50 bucks is 50 bucks! Goodbye, V-Dub. It was nice having you in my life. And I wish you the best life. Well, being a parts car, I guess. I really am going to miss this car. This is where it was when it happened. This guy caught on camera, I hope. It really wasn't a fun day for me when this shit happened, but it all works out for the better in most respects. Because I did end up getting some good stuff out of this. This car offered me a lot over the years. All my fancy lights and stuff have to come with the car. Which is disappointing. I want everything. Every ounce of what I did in here. Oh yeah. Oh, I gotta get the shit out of here. I have a lot of stuff I gotta bring with me. Out of this car. Yeah, it's kind of a shame, but... Quarter. You know what they say, it all works out for the best. In this situation, that is pretty much as truthful as it gets.